I'm Dustin Abbott and I'm here today to uh, do a little segment that I call Buds on a Budget and specifically I'm looking at a number of the kind of inexpensive Bluetooth headphones that are available right now that are specifically marketed for those of us that like to do sports. I'm a cyclist, I'm a runner and a whole lot of other athletic activities and so um, I certainly have been interested in the concept of Bluetooth earbuds for a long time but had despaired in the early generations because of issues like them being kind of bulky and heavy and not staying in your ears very well while running. I also had some significant issues with early um, generations of Bluetooth earbuds and that uh, when moving like that I found often that the sound would kind of come in packets and would it go in and out in and out and just drive you crazy and so uh, I actually went back to wired buds for a while and I've even ran with Bluetooth just over the head earphones as well but I've got a new generation of inexpensive and when I say inexpensive our least expensive model here is from the manufacturer Aki. It is the EPB4s and even here in Canada they retail regular price for $21.99 at Amazon. I'll throw a link down below and, and they can often be had for less expensive than that. Our most expensive options here are the Soundpeats Q20s and they are $30.99 here in Canada and, um, and even cheaper in the US market. I've also got a couple of other models from Soundpeats. I've got the Q15s um, which retail for $30.59 and I have got the uh, Soundpeats Q12s which retail for $30.59 as well and then finally the Mixedir Fly 2s and these are $25.99 um, all uh, taken off of Amazon's current pricing for these. So my point is is that most of these have similar specs they have a fairly similar price tag there's a nine dollar variation from the least expensive to the most expensive and so I just want to take a look at which is the best bang for the buck if you want to have a limited budget can you get a decent set of Bluetooth buds for that price but overall these are really they're quite impressive and and the good news is is that I'm able to do athletics with them cycling running all of them without having an issue with drop sound which is number one the biggest deal in fact one of these I've opened it to take pictures of it but haven't used it because I'm going to give away this pair of Q15s I'm triangulating my opinion of it from the other two from the same brand that I have and so it's had pictures taken but hasn't been used and if you'll uh, look down below there'll be information on how you can win a pair in the giveaway for a limited time over the next month but uh, let's uh, just take a look quickly at the the specs for these and so first our cheapest one our Aki EPB4s um, they retail as I said for $21.99 it's the Bluetooth 4.1 standard they claim a, a working range of 33 feet or 10 meters but um, in my uh, test that we're going to look at in a moment they maybe even outperform that in some ways they have a battery life of four and a half hours which is my greatest disappointment and I've actually been using this pair for several months and in a lot of ways I like them but that short battery life does become a factor and the one annoying thing about these is that when the battery gets low you start to get a fairly insistent message that the batteries are low please recharge and then it's repeated every few seconds and so I've been out hitting it hard in the middle of a cycling session and this starts happening and it's, it's a bit exasperating so battery life is a bit short but um, overall they have uh, a lot of other things to recommend them fairly decent sound and uh, fairly aggressive sound that's good for sports and also they fit in fairly well and one kind of aside is if you're a cyclist like myself most all the rest of these have an inline control for um, controlling all the functions from receiving calls to um, to pairing to advancing to the next track pausing all that stuff but uh, the Aki actually has the control in the right bud and so on this side there's a rocker for the up and down type things and then here's the main play pause and sync button the good news about that is that when you're cycling and you've got a helmet on some of the inline things can sometimes disappear under your strap and get hard to get at the fact that it's up here right on the bud makes it easy to access and so that's been one of the pluses for me when using that a standby time of 175 hours a charge time of two hours 
It weighs in um, towards the heavier side here at 0.58 ounces or 16.4 grams, which of course is still featherweight. Um, it claims to be sweat proof, but it doesn't offer any kind of actual rating for that. But at the same time, I've done a lot of sweating in these and I've also not had any kind of issue. On the plus side, it does have the longest um, factory warranty here, two years, and if you register, I think you get an extra six months on top of that. So pretty impressive for such an inexpensive pair of buds. Um, the biggest negative, not so much for sports use. Um, for sports use, I would say it's the short battery life. Biggest negative for just regular use is that it is the only one of the bunch that experiences the um, kind of lip sync lag that some has affected previous generations of Bluetooth buds to where you see lips moving before the sound reaches your ear. Um, fortunately, all the rest of these perform perfectly in that regard, but not the Aukis. And so if you're a movie watcher, you may want to look at something else. All of these have a micro USB charge port and charge cord, which is great because these days it's a fairly universal thing. Um, next, we'll look at the uh, Mix CD or Fly 2s. These retail for $25.99 and like all the rest of these have the inline charge port here. Um, it is the Bluetooth standard of 4.1 and interestingly this claims a 7 meter outdoor, 15 meter indoor rating. It vastly outperformed the former and, and did quite good with the latter and so um, uh, has a very good working range on it. Now, this has the tops of our bunch for battery life, eight hours, which um, that's eight hours of listening time, and they say nine hours of talk time. So if you're just using it to talk on your phone, you get an extra hour. But if you're listening, um, you get eight hours, which uh, almost doubles up the Aukis performance. Also, the charge time is the least. It says only one and a half hours. Now, the standby time is a bit of an aberration. It says over 4,000 hours plus, which... Um, the highest figure behind that is 180 hours. So I don't know if that's a typo um, or if it just has a really fantastic standby time for some reason. 0.59 ounces or 17 grams. It claims to be sweat and splash resistant, um, but no kind of IPX rating is given. It has a one year warranty, no lip sync issue. Now we get to the three sound peats, uh, the Q12s, Q15s, and Q20s. Their claim to fame, all of them basically the same price with the, you know, very small exception of 50 cents extra for the Q20s. All of them have the Bluetooth standard of 4.1. And these also, um, they have a couple of things that, that help to aid their sound. Number one, they use the APTX codec that helps to give you, you know, high definition, clear sound. They also have active sound cancellation and uh, uh, CVC 6.0, um, which of course helps with, with sound isolation with that. And, and so they all claim the same working range, 33 feet to 10 meters, but in my uh, practice there was the, the Q12s got significantly better range than what the Q20s is out in the real world. And um, their ch charge time, the Q12s, is, is one to two hours, two hours for the Q15s, two for the uh, Q20s. Battery life um, ranges from 6 hours to 5 hours to 5.5 hours, and so the Q12s being uh, tops there. The weight, the lightest, is the Q15s at um, 4 or 5 ounces or 12.7 grams. Next is the uh, Q12s with 0.53 ounces or 15 grams, and then the Q20s are 16 grams or 0.56 ounces. All very close. These all claim an actual IP. IPX rating, which is to their credit. They are IPX4, which if you look at what that means, it's able to hand, handle some uh, streaming water from every direction. And so that certainly helps with the sweat-proof claim. They all have a one-year warranty, no issue with the lip, lip sync, um, and they all have micro USB. They give you uh, the protocols for controlling things, the ability to receive calls. All of these, I used an iPad for video use. I used an iPhone 6 for some music. Also used an uh, iPod Touch, fifth generation, and then an iPod Nano for the running segments. And, uh, and so um, I, the iPod Touch I used during the cycling segments. And so I've used all of them in uh, sports activities. And, and so um, there are a couple of standouts here. Now, initially, uh, my favorite sound comes from the Q12s. I really love the sound of them. But I had one issue when I began to go out cycling and running. And that is, while they fit really comfortably and really tight, 
um, I would get a kind of a thudding issue every time there was impact, either, either wheels over rough pavement or um, my shoes hit striking the ground, and so it really spoiled them for actual sports use. Fortunately, all of these come with the ability to kind of customize them with ear hooks and uh, different um, tips. But to be honest, I couldn't find the tip that I liked the best to solve that problem out of the Q12s. I went with one of the kind of double, um, double designs where it's not a solid one, but there's two different layers. And I actually, um, I stole that out of another kit. But the good news is I was able to solve that problem, and so it makes them far more attractive to me for sports use um, once again. And so they stayed in nice and secure, as did all of them, with one exception, the Q20s. Um, they have kind of a square design that really didn't fit my ear all that well. Now, they worked fine for my wife, um, but not for me. And so um, I wasn't able to get them to a comfortable fit, whereas all the rest of them, I was able to get to a, a, a comfortable fit and a secure fit for both cycling and running. Now, the one kind of cool feature that sets the Q20s apart, that being said, is the fact that it has what they call magnetic control. As you can see, the backs will clip together, but it's more than just a feature, you know, to hang them around your neck like a necklace. But rather, um, the cool thing is, is that every time that they are clipped together, they automatically power down and disconnect. And then when they are separated, they will actually automatically power on and sync with your last known device. And so typically, by the time you get them to your ears, they're already synced and ready to use, which is pretty cool, all things considered. And, uh, and for the sound quality, I liked the sound the best from the Q12s, um, followed by the mixed CDers. And of course, I didn't actually listen to the Q15s, but they look similar to the Q12s in a lot of ways. My least favorite sound actually came from the Q20s, which, as I said, I may have gotten a bit of a misfit here. But um, to me, the sound was a bit more tinny and a little less full from them. Um, but that could also come back to the fact that I had a hard time getting a quality fit for my ear out of them. And so uh, there's other factors that could be at play with that. The Aukies, um, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, I mean, if you're using them as I have been, primarily just for sports use, they're actually fine. They're, they're fairly aggressive, kind of heavy bass. Um, but for sports use, I like the sound, but it's not as nuanced or um, dynamic as the sound from some of the other buds. So my overall sound winner for me is the Q12s. We'll take a quick look now at my outdoor range test, just kind of a fun uh, little segment where I look at the performance of each of these and how far you can stray away from your device out in the real world. Okay, we've seen on paper that all of these earbuds have pretty close to the same specs when it comes to their range. So we're going to test to see if that's the case. These are the EPB4 buds. And so what we're going to do is outside, we're going to use the same device. We're going to hook them up and then we're going to uh, start walking and find when the sound starts to cut out. So I'm going to move in a straight line this direction and it'll give us a visual representation of how long the range is. I'm going to move at a, try to move at the same pace for all of these and I'll stop when the sound begins to cut out. As you can see, the Aukies have a very impressive range. Even now, the sound is starting to cut in and out, but I was still able to get a decent amount of sound from them even then. Next up we have the sound beats. These are the Q20s and of course the nice thing about the Q20s is that they automatically power on and they've already done syncing on their own and so they are ready to go. So let's give it a try. Same pattern. A somewhat disappointing range for these by comparison to the others. Now we have the other sound peats. These are the Q12s and from this we can kind of extrapolate for the Q15s that we're going to give away. These also synced up nice and quickly so let's go. Well they definitely outperform the Q20s. starting to have some misses and 
about here. This is the second time that I've done that test and gotten basically the same result on the Q12s. So finally we have the Mix CD'er. This is the Fly 2's. So we've passed the level of the Q20's. Still going strong. It's here that the Q12 started to cut out, but uh, these mixed CD ears are still going strong. Still nice and clear. And there's our cutoff point right there. So not quite to the extreme level of the Aukis, but very close performance. Now, of course, there are even more factors that can affect sound when you get inside, you know, the density of walls, surfaces, all of those things. And so, um, but I did a, a solid circuit with all of them, setting my phone in a um, kind of a, a central location where it was for all of them and walking the same circuit. And so in that um, situation, my top picks were, the best performers were the Mix CD or Fly 2s, um, followed by the Sound Peach Q12s, and then the Aki, um, EPB4s and then finally the Q20s were the worst performers for me in that kind of segment. If you want to look down below I've kind of detailed kind of given more of a mini review to each one in a written article below with my kind of picks and pans um, for each one of them as well as a few more details but I would say that my favorite of these overall is the uh, Q12s from Sound Pete. After I was able to resolve that kind of thudding issue and still get a good uh, fit, experiment with the ear hooks and got the fit that I wanted, it both gives me the good sound that I like, but it also uh, allows me to eliminate that thudding issue in my head that I had previously. My second top pick is the Mix CD'er, um, and this, these are the Fly 2's, followed by the Aukies, and then last, the Q20's. But remember, the Q20's were a no-fly for me, mostly because they just didn't fit in my head. And I will note that most user reviewers, in fact, all of them seem to be quite pleased with them. So, as they say, your mileage may vary. Most all of them come with a nice padded case um, that I really like. The one exception is the Aukies that comes with a awkward little drawstring pouch that you know as you can see is kind of long and uh, it's kind of hard to force them into it. Uh, it takes a little bit of work and of course doesn't provide the protection value um, of these nice cases. My favorite of them is the one that comes with the mix CD or mostly because it just gives you a little carabiner here for clipping on to different things and bringing it along. But overall, the good news is you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a pretty good sounding and nicely performing sport set of Bluetooth buds that you can use for general purpose or for out doing athletics. And that, my friends, is great news. They've come a long way from where they were. And, um, and so I encourage you to take a look at some of these. And if you're in the market for a cheap pair of buds, check out the Q12s or the Fly 2s and uh, hopefully you'll find something that you really like. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.